time for maybe one or two more depending on how you stay stay focused if you can for a little grace Thank you, Jesus. I wonder if anybody would, maybe you didn't feel, maybe you felt uncomfortable praying, leading us in prayer. Maybe you don't feel confident enough. I wonder if anybody would just go around the room. Maybe you could just name a nation or a person that you're concerned about that's in our world today. Anybody on my left, maybe just say a name or a nation or a person that's on your heart tonight. Anybody, anything that comes to mind. Scandinavia. Amen. Someone else? Anybody on my left? You think about our world? Haiti? Yes. Thank you. I wasn't even thinking of that. Excellent. Someone else? We else on our left? Let's pray for these right now. Heavenly Father, we pray for Scandinavia. You see the ongoing challenges in these countries. Very different in Scandinavia than they are in Haiti, but Lord, impoverished people, people that are struggling, people, Lord, that are facing challenges, financial challenges, need for food, and all these issues, Lord, that are going on. God, in these nations, Lord, sometimes that, Lord, because there's been trouble for so long, and God, they need you so desperately. The wars between religions in Scandinavia, the challenges, Lord. There, Lord God, and, and, and the hearts and mindsets, Lord, in that area, that, that grouping of areas, Lord, in the Scandinavian countries. Oh, God, you will be with them. Open up hearts of people. Speak into their lives. Surely there's hungry people. They're calling upon you today. We pray for Haiti. We know there's some beautiful, wonderful churches in that area, but, Lord, there's so, so much corruption in that culture in our leadership, Lord. There's so much, uh, Lord, famine and disease, God. Lord, people that are just doing their own thing and going their own way. And Lord God, admit, Lord, not caring for the least of these. 
strength that we pray. We've sent so many humanitarian missions into Haiti, and yet, Lord, it just seems an ongoing challenge. I'm praying, God, that you would raise up. I know it's the last days, but would you raise up at this time? Lord God, a hope, a strength, a comfort in these nations, we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's remember Israel, let's remember Ukraine, and let's remember any other thing else as we conclude in prayer. We'll just do a quick prayer, but let's just pray in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, you know all the needs around our world. Ukraine, Lord, the Israel, Hamas, Lord, Yemen, Afghanistan. And the, Lord, what's going on with China and Taiwan is ongoing. The challenges there, the stresses between North and South Korea, Saudi Arabia, there, what's going on with Israel and Iran. Lord, we know Iran is just becoming a real challenge. I bring, oh God, you would overshadow and protect, I pray, in your wonderful name, Jesus. And we pray for our coming elections, Lord, that as we prepare, Lord God, help our hearts, especially here in North America. I would to God that we would turn our hearts back to you and give us a little more time for the harvest. Lord Jesus, we ask this in your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We'll go right into a worship song here tonight. Let's just wait on the Lord as we seek his face. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading all the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leading all the everlasting
would you just lift up your hands and confirm that with them right now. Lord, you really are. You are my healer. You're all I need. You're more than enough. Not just for me, but for every need in this world. You're greater. You're bigger. You're stronger. Woo. Come on, let faith rise in your heart. There's no use moving on to prayer if you don't believe what we just sang. If that's not true for you, hallelujah. Oh, you're my healer. You're my deliverer. You're everything that I need. You're my portion. You're more than enough. Hallelujah. 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 I'll say this. I know sometimes in some churches, and I, I don't feel that here, thankfully. But some people seem to want to just move on with the service. And I'm sorry, this is not about you. It's about him, and we have to go at his pace. And sometimes he wants us to wait on him. I feel him wanting us to wait just a little bit. Would you just wait on him just a moment longer? Just rest in his presence like he told us to this morning. Would you rest in him? Would you let yourself just kind of die out to whatever's worrying you fretting about, concerned about we're going to bring those needs to the Lord in just a moment for right now Lord we just rest in you you're our comfort and joy whether here at home or in a hospital bed Lord or someplace far from God Lord right now whoever's listening to this service or listening to the sound of our voice whether here or there Lord God let them find rest for their soul they'll find comfort they'll find strength as they wait upon you as they wait upon you as we heard from Psalm 37 this morning we need to wait upon you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus what a wonderful friend what a beautiful friend what a companion for our souls thank you Jesus joy we worship you we love you Lord Thank you. Amen. Let's, uh, if you want to, you can stay your seat, but we're going to take prayer requests. You can, if you want to sit while we take the prayer requests, if you wish. And in just a moment, we'll stand and, and pray together. Anybody on my left that has a spoken prayer request? Yes. Let's remember Terry. Wow. Anybody else on my left side over here? Alta, yes. We don't know exactly what's going on there but we know she was not doing well this morning we went into the hospital to see Wilma today we were hoping to see if Alta was there uh, they didn't have her in place well, I'll be right there bro anybody else on the left okay yes Calvin okay okay Woodstock. Okay, Calvin Munn. Okay, well, let's remember Calvin Munn. Do we know anything specific? What might be going on? He's just in the hospital. Okay, let's remember. Amen. I was with Wilma today. She's looking better, and I've seen her in a long time. Glenn, I don't know. She said she was getting ready to go for a walk, so I was I was pretty excited because uh, that's good. She was sharp-eyed. Amen. And uh, thank you for taking such beautiful care of your wife. I respect that highly. Amen. Anybody else tonight? Yes. Yeah. David, is that correct? Yeah. So they found him a place to live. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. 
We'll thank the Lord. Well, it's good to have a victory report, isn't it? Amen. We've been praying for the situation, and uh, we pray that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. God's working on his heart. Yeah. We'll pray that he doesn't ignore that and that he, God lets whatever that situation is that it will work through that to minister to him. You know, we're living in a world full of a lot of broken people. But they don't realize it's sometimes through brokenness that God brings us healing. Isn't that strange? And they know what I'm talking about. It's through our brokenness that God oftentimes brings us healing and relief. Amen. And often the brokenness in our lives is what helps other people. And so we shouldn't despise the day of small things. We shouldn't despise the, the challenges that we face because those are oftentimes the very things that qualify us to minister to someone else. Is there anybody else tonight? Okay, yeah. Yes, she was doing better. He talked to me this week. But let's keep let's keep Elaine and David in prayer. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. The Lord cares, and we're so thankful that he healed well. So as we go to prayer, let's remember that God answers prayer. He hears us, and he answers. Can we go to him with faith tonight? Heavenly Father, you. Huh, you really are our Father. You're better to us than any earthly father. You're a better friend, Lord, than any friend has ever been. You're the closest brother. Lord, you're closer to us than anybody in this world because you are so faithful. Lord, you called to us this morning and reminded us, that, Lord, you want us to delight ourselves in you. And if we do, the desires of our heart will be met. And God, we're asking you tonight of a desire to see people healed. We're coming to you, Lord, coming before you, asking not for ourselves, but for the needs of others. God, you've heard every request, Lord. You've heard every challenge from the David and Lane that we just talked about. People in our church that are struggling. You know, Lord, ongoing needs with Wilma and the Connors, Lord, and others, Lord Jesus, that we just, we so care about. You heard the needs here tonight. Lord God, every single situation. Lord God, every challenge that's being faced. Lord God, whether Lord Jesus in the Woodstock Church, Lord, or here, Lord God, or family and friends and neighbors that we're reaching for. Oh, God, you know every situation. And, God, you understand every, every comp comprehend everything about them, Lord, because you love them and you are with them right now. You know those, Lord, that you're talking to, that you're trying to draw into a closer relationship with you. You know the ones that you're working on, Lord, for them to let go of their own will. And Lord, submit to your will. Lord, the ones, Lord, that have physical needs, but more importantly, they have needs in their mind and in their spirits. God, they need greater faith and confidence in you. They need to spend more time in your presence meditating on you, God. Draw them to you, all of our lost loved ones, all of the needs. It's so good to cast our cares on you. It's so good to come to you tonight and not have to worry about anything, but said pray about everything, to ask God for what we need, knowing and Lord, you're well able to meet it and surpass it. Oh, God, tonight we believe that we're praying effectual, fervent prayers because we confess our faults, Lord. And because, Lord, we prayed for one another that we may be healed. And because, Lord, we are coming before you covered by your blood, cleansed by your mercy, strengthened by grace. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, can we just worship him for just a moment? In thanksgiving, Lord, we know that you're faithful. 
We know that you're good. We know that every need that we've mentioned, God has been placed into your hands. God, we trust in you. You've gone before us. You already prepared a way of escape for those that need it. God, you've already been working on the people that we've even brought before you tonight. You're doing a work, Lord. You're doing a work, Lord. And we trust you in this situation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you want to uh, pay attention to our bulletin, there's uh, things that you need to know in there ongoing. But we're going to go right into, into uh, another song as we wait upon the Lord. Thank you for all that you give of time and talents and treasure. Your magnificent your hands and make a joyful noise. We are fret free and whom the Son has set free whoo, is free indeed. Amen. Shake a hand or two or wave a hand. Say hi to somebody. Amen. At this time we're going to ask the right reverend. No mistake. Amen. Reverend Pollard is going to join us tonight and share the word of the Lord with us. He's even got his own personalized mic. Amen. God bless you. We're looking forward to the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um. I don't know if we could sing one more song. Oh, Brother Andrew's trying for a mic check over there. Check! Are we in the house? <laughs> uh, we sang it this morning, King of Glory. Can you just do the chorus on that? There's another song, but I don't think it's familiar here, so try this one. Just the chorus? Yeah, just the chorus. King of Glory yes. Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. Glory fill. Is that your prayer? Fill this place. I wanna be with you, Jesus. I wanna be with you. Oh, Jesus. Glory fill this place. I want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Sing it one more time. 
King of Glory. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Oh, Lord. That's my prayer tonight. The title tonight is Living in the Overflow. Living in the Overflow. I don't know if any of you have struggled with well water problems or lived through a drought. I was actually uh, thinking about this message on the way here tonight, and I just noticed, I didn't even hear anything on the news or see anything go around, but they did a study, I guess, and a sunrise uh, water drill, bore drilling. I don't know if you guys seen that or not on the side of the road, just inside New Maryland there next to the uh, municipal buildings, but they're doing a uh, wellhead and I looked up online because tonight I'm going to be talking about wells and I was interested to know what that actually does and they, they estimate they can pull out a hundred thousand gallons of water a day out of the wellheads that they're going to be putting in there so that's pretty amazing when you think a hundred thousand gallons of water so I don't know if any of you have ever struggled with I saw Brother Frank's hand go up there. Poor water conditions. But I, uh, I was raised kind of out in the country. My parents actually bought the house off of my grandma and grandpa uh, when I was, how old was I? Probably 11 or so. But that place didn't have a good well. And I remember grandma, she saved all the water to water her plants with. All the sump pump water she could get and anything else that she could find to get her garden growing and uh, while we live there my parents actually still do live there the well you knew it was victoria day long weekend because the well would just dry just shut off like someone shut a tap off and we lived out of a, a cistern uh the majority of the year either hauling water ourselves or uh paying for water to be hauled in so when we built a house in Washago, it was my greatest concern was to have a good well. <laughs> but it was very high water table. And we tried for the first year, we just did a dug well because it was much cheaper. And I only went down about 15 feet. Uh, but same thing around July, it would dry up. So we had to pony up some cash and get a drilled well. And they went down 450 feet. Still couldn't get water. <laughs> they had to fracture it, and we still only got about three gallons per minute, which the volume of 450 feet in the ground was quite a bit, so we never ran out of water. But they had to frack that after going down 450 feet. It was two days of drilling through granite, and every hour I watched the dollar signs fly by. <laughs> and we were praying, Lord, let them hit water soon, or my bank account's going to be empty. <laughs> It was to the tone of $21,000 by the time they were done. So, But yes, it was a long way down there. But we're going to read in the scripture tonight in Genesis chapter 26, starting in verse 11. We're going to read tonight that it was no different, really, in Abraham and Isaac's day. And I believe that they got ESV up there, but I'm just going to read from the KJV tonight, uh, starting in verse 11. You can stand if you wish or stay seated, whatever you feel. Feels good in here. Uh, What did I say? Did I start at verse 11? Verse 11. Oh, I started at verse 12 for you. Okay, that's good. That's all right. Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great, for he had possession of flocks and possessions of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. They were jealous. All the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. 
And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdsmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of that well Isaac, because they strove with him. And they digged again another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of that Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now... The Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. In Jesus' name, why don't you pray with me tonight? Father, I'm so thankful for your word. It's anointed. God, I pray that you'll touch this vessel. Lord, I pray that you will help me to deliver what you've laid on my heart, God, that this people would receive and hear the word of the Lord tonight, I pray, that we would have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You can be seated. I don't take it lightly being up here. I've said it every time, I think, but it's true. I, uh, I believe the Lord has something for us tonight. So just as important as it is now for water, it was so in the days of Abraham. And Abraham had uh, laid out these wells. And after he had passed away, as we read tonight first portion of this scripture it talks about Isaac redigging the wells of his father and I'm so thankful for the elders that are amongst us and those elders that have gone on before us I'm thankful for the work that they did just as Abraham dug wells and established some boundaries I'm thankful for the foundation that our elders have laid I'm thankful for the stones of memorial that have been built and I'm thankful for the wells that have been dug in Abraham's day, there were signs of blessing. When you found a well, it was a blessing. It was a sign that the Lord blessed that area or that they believed that the Lord um, allowed them to stay in that area and to be fruitful because it was uh, to find the source of a well was to literally find the source of life. And if you know anything about that part of the country, it's very arid and dry. And to find wells in that land, it was... Uh, a great blessing and it was necessary to sustain their herds and their families it was also used to mark their boundaries or their territories they would dig wells to say hey I established this area you know you've seen the the maybe the pictures or the videos of when there's a, a, a war being fought and they put the play plant the flag they mark their territory uh, that's the same thing that they would do with these wells. If they had a well that would mark that that has been occupied, it's some place that we have put our feet and we uh, live here, we travel through this area, it's ours. They were, uh, they were very much uh, tribes people. They, were, they moved around a lot, but they would mark out these areas that they lived in, uh, their boundaries by these wells. It was a stake to claim of your location. And the Philistines had become very envious, as we read, of the wells that Abraham had dug. And not only were they envious of the wells, but what that represented, that God's hand was on Abraham's life, that God's blessing was on Abraham's life. And, and, and the Philistines had filled these wells to try and snuff out the inheritance of Abraham. He tried to snuff out uh, any memory of Abraham, hoping that, that Isaac wouldn't remember or that Isaac wouldn't uh, go back and remove those well, or the, the dirt from those wells to remark his territory, to reclaim the land that his father uh, had established. They wanted to erase the boundaries. They wanted to erase the presence of the one who walked with God from their area, and they wanted to erase the memory of Abraham. They were jealous of God's blessing. They wanted to stop the source of life. They wanted to erase the very presence of God. And our culture and our world is very much this way. We know as we look around that there are many things that they want to erase from, from culture. They want to remove the memories of and history of who Jesus was. They want to remove it from the very fabric of our culture. They want to take away and, and, and stop the ideas of the of 
the Christianity and of the Bible. They want to remove these things. And you can see them uh, trying to do things that are godless. They're, they're after a lifestyle that, that has removed God from their life. They don't want to talk about God. They want to remove him and the thoughts of God. The enemy, just like the Philistine, is running rampant in our culture. The, the godlessness, the desires of self-pleasing and self-government to, to live how we want and to do what we want. It's the, 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 the promises and protection of God have been removed from our culture. God's word and his boundaries, his safety, have been knocked down and buried in our culture. So Isaac's first step was he had to return to these wells to unstop and reclaim what belong to him. And just as our elders have, have things in our, in our history that they have laid as boundaries and memorials, the land uh, that they were promised, the things that God had given them, and, and, and things that, and territories that God had given them, the enemy may have come in and he has begun to press back against those boundaries. And it's time for the church to stand up and reclaim what has been promised to us, to reclaim the strength and promises of God, that, that through him all things are possible. Possible. We're able to do these things. It's not time to be distracted or demised by the culture is pushing against us. It's the land that's been promised to us. It's the word of God that says that he will do what he said he will do. He cannot go back. He cannot lie. He has promised some things to people in our world today that we can hang on to. And there's a foundation that has been laid before us that we can reclaim. And Isaac reclaimed this. He reclaimed it, and the enemy, he let the enemy know he was there. If he hadn't have gone and done it, if he hadn't have gone and dug those wells, the Philistines would have been just as happy. But because he went and did it, he revisited those things, those places that Abraham once went. He reclaimed, he rekindled, and he reestablished the landmarks of his territory and the blessings of of God. And sometimes we need to get a hold of those things that the elders have laid. We have to reclaim them. We have to rekindle the fire that's within us. We have to reestablish the things that they died for, that they lived for, so that the enemy can see that we have some backbone, that we're willing to stand up for what is right, to do what's right, and to walk after the Lord. The things that the enemy would love to steal, to stamp out, to tread out, he needs to see that we will stand for righteousness. And it's not about being perfect. It's about just walking with him. It's about having a relationship with God that, that allows us to love and to touch the world around us, to not be afraid of certain things in our culture. It's not that we're seeking for anything new, really. We want the same fire that our elders had, the passion, the revival that burned through the land, that, that had the elders on their knees and praying for their culture, for their lost cities and their lost communities. It's not something new. It's the same Holy Ghost fire and compassion that drove them to their knees. And if they believed in their day that the world was going to hell, how much closer and more aware should we be filled with the compassion that our world is on its way to hell? How much closer is our culture to hell without hope, help, or a savior. And we have to realize that what they live for still needs to burn in us. We need to be filled with that compassion. We need to redig the wells that were once established, the source of life for them, the wells that were dug on their knees in prayer and te tears and pangs of birthing, something worth living for and something worth dying for. They believed it. They believed it. And just as passionately as Isaac went after and redug those wells, that he could have a source of life for his herds and his family and his servants. Secondly, Isaac was not satisfied with just living with only the blessing of yesterday. He was not, was not satisfied with just living in the blessings of his father. He needed his own connection. He needed his own blessing. He needed to establish for himself his own boundaries and footprint in the land in which God was calling him to possess. Where he lived and where he dwelled, he needed to establish for himself, himself his own wells. Living in the overflow. Sometimes we can get complacent. We can get just 
a little bit settled with where we are and we can be satisfied but but Isaac wasn't satisfied I'm not satisfied with with the relationship that my parents or my grandparents had I need to have a relationship with God for myself I can't just live on their blessings I'm thankful for it but I have to establish something for my family to see I need to make sure that I'm living not just for somebody else but for myself so that I can present that to my children and to their children and the next generation and I want to have it instilled in them that not just to live off my blessing but to establish their own wells, their own places of consecration, their own memorials and this is what Isaac did. He built for his family these areas of living water, life, the source of life. And you can see where we read here in, the ver in verse 20, the first well he dug, he was met with contention Verse 20, he called that well Isik, the well of wrangling or wrestling or strife. The second well in verse 21, Sitna, was the well of enmity or hatred and opposition. Have you ever faced that in your life? Has the enemy ever come against you when you've tried to do things for God and you've had to wrestle a little bit? You had to strive a little bit. You had to get in and dig a little harder and maybe you were met with more resistance. Maybe you were met with the very hatred that the enemy has for you as a Christian and all that you stand for. Maybe even your family has contended you. Maybe there's been things that you've had to let go because of the contention or the opposition of friends and family, but this is not not where Isaac stops and it, it even it doesn't even say that Isaac messed with it it doesn't he didn't fight against it he didn't call all his servants and go warring against the tribesmen of Gerah no he he just said let's move on we're just going to go to the next place because I know that where I get a well and where where I have the freedom and the liberty I know that that's where God's going to bless me and I'm going to keep pressing until I can dig a well that I'm not going to have to deal with the strife or the enmity or hatred of the culture around me I'm going to go to the next well and and usually we say three strikes you're out so so Isaac is is on number three here and it's a good thing that God sees fit to bless him because in verse 22, he calls that one Rehoboth. It's a well of broad space or wide places. God has made room for us in this land surrounded by my enemy. God has put his hand on me, he said. This is a place that we can establish and we can spread out our tents and we can be in this place that God has called us to. And I can see the blessings of God because it's a place that's producing life. It's a place that has wells of living water and there's enough here. To, to sustain me and my herds and my family. This place uh, is where I want to dwell in the broad places of the land. And many times we've been tempted, uh, I can attest to that, that, that we've been tempted to give in maybe and give up uh, when we've been met with the strife uh, or the resentment or the opposition or the oppression uh, or anything that the enemy can come at us. Uh, but I'm here to encourage you tonight that you just keep pressing. Uh, you just get on your knees uh, and begin to tap into the, some of those wells, uh, not only of what our forefathers dug, uh, but dig into something for yourself. Uh, dig into a place where you can live uh, in the overflow uh, the Spirit of God in you, dwelling in you, walking with you. Many times we can be tempted to give up, but God is able to come through if you keep pressing, keep moving forward, keep claiming the dominion in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just need to keep pressing and keep moving forward because God has a blessing that's coming. Do you want blessing in your life? Blessing for you and your family. If you want freedom, you want peace, you want wholeness, we have to keep pressing. We have to keep on digging. We got to put our shoulder to the plow and keep pushing. Isaac just kept moving on until he found that place where God wanted him to dwell. And it's interesting here that even though he dug those wells, someone else, the enemy actually, in fact, stole those things from him. All that he worked for, all that his servants worked for, the enemy sustained life off those wells. The enemy moved in and claimed what was rightfully Isaac's and took it away. But Isaac just moved on. 
And we actually were talking about it last night in prayer about humility. And Sister Tracy was talking about the life of Jesus and he saw himself of no reputation. And we don't have to stand up and, and fight. We just have to do what's right. And Isaac moved on, even though the enemy took it. He could have raised up arms. He could have decided he was going to go and fight. And, and, and who knows, maybe God would have blessed it and he would have killed all those people. But he just moved on. And I was recently reminded to do what's right will often cost you something. To do wrong is never a sacrifice. It's easy to do wrong, right? I mean, it's our carnal nature to do wrong. <laughs> Truly, it's never a sacrifice. It's never hard work to do wrong. Whenever you wanna, want to go after, the devil has those pleasures ready for you. Your flesh is easily to go after what's wrong, to go with the flow. Everybody's going with the flow this, these days. Nobody wants to swim up river against the current. It's the, it, the, 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 the destruction and worldly pleasure that the broad way is lined with. It's there. It's for a season. It says, there's a scripture that talks about that, that this, the, the, the way to hell is paved with, no, maybe that's another, that's another thing I was thinking of. Yes, that's another one. That's not a scripture. Yeah, yeah, but there is one. I think there's another one. I can't remember it right now. Yes, broad is the way that leads to destruction. So to to see that and to go after those things and seeing the worldly pleasure all around us is is easy to go after. It's ultimately will lead to death and destruction, though. There's always a final price. It's not a sacrifice, but you end up with death and destruction. And when finally Isaac felt that this place where he landed with the third well was where God was allowing him to establish himself, God gave him this broad area to enlarge and to dwell in and to spread out and be fruitful. It wasn't there long thereafter that God meets with him in Genesis chapter 26, verses 23 through 25. From there he went up to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, your father. Fear not, for I am with you and will bless you and multiply your offspring for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built there an altar and called the name of the Lord, called on the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent, and there Isaac's servants dug a well. Once you find where God wants you to be, once you tap into the well that God is calling you to. Once you, like Pastor was talking about this morning actually, find your life in Him, the source of sustaining life, the, the living overflow that we will experience in our life will not be explainable. We cannot be satisfied with living off yesterday. We have to have a fresh flow today. We cannot be content living off someone else's blessing. We need to have our own. We cannot be content waiting for someone else to do the hard work for us. We got to get on our knees and work and dig in prayer until we see the wells break forth. If we don't do the hard work, the enemy is just going to keep stopping the wells, filling them with the junk of society, attempting to erase everything good and godly from our lives and from our cities. But we need to be on our knees in prayer, crying out for the names of our friends and families, our streets, because God wants to bring something real and lasting. He wants to give them and fill their bellies with wells of springing water. Just as he talked to the, the lady at the well, I'm going to give you something that you'll never thirst of again. It's the Spirit of God. It's the living source. It's more than just a cistern. It's a living water. It's the water of blessing. It's the water of life. The enemy would love to see nothing more than our family units completely destroyed. God's design, God's patterns erased from our culture. But we have to be willing to do the hard work. Pastor, I talked about it last night in prayer. I mean, I've had this message going before he asked me to speak. So 
But he mentioned in prayer last night that we have to be willing to dig down into the sources that our elders had, the same flow, the same power, the same strength, the same peace. It's available if we'll tap into it. It's available if we'll put the work in. It's available to us if we will work together in unity to do what the Lord has called us to do, to shine like he has called us to shine. And some in our culture, or maybe even our church culture, have believed the lie that it's no longer necessary, and it's a very dangerous lie that you don't have to really pray like that you really don't need to praise like that you really don't need to worship like that but i'll tell you what some of the most powerful and most beautiful times that we have had as a husband and wife or as a family have been in our kitchen or in our living room when the presence of god has swept in and we've made that place a place of sanctuary we felt his spirit come in because it is necessary it's necessary to sustain life it's the well of living water and sometimes you have to dig and you got to put your your hard work into it to pray until something changes in me something changes in my home i need worship and I need praise to fulfill my life so that I can be fulfilling to what God wants me to do and what God wants me to be. Our homes need to be the sanctuary that our children can feel and touch. The place of sanctuary, the flow, the live in the overflow, to live in the overflow where we have dug into the wells that's flowed through us and to our babies don't tell me it's outdated. Don't try and tell me that it was only for the apostles' day. It's for today. And we can, every one of us, live in the same flow of the Spirit. We can walk in the Spirit. We can be filled with Him. We can be surrounded by Him. But it starts in our own lives and in our own homes, living in the overflow. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. One of the saddest things, or probably the, mo the most sad thing about reading the Old Testament is reading how so many times God's people kept rejecting him, kept turning away, kept going after other gods that had no power. But somehow they were enticed by the pleasure of the moment. And they would turn to these other gods, other forms of idolatry. And in this portion of Scripture, the two things that God says here is, number one, they rejected their source, the fountain of living water. Help us not to reject that source help us to always remember that he is our source of pure living water it's not what we have it's not what we don't have it's not how comfortable we are or how uncomfortable we are how much uh, we have in our bank accounts or the lack thereof it's living with the source of living water and second of all they resorted to using cisterns instead of the fresh life bringing well of living water. And when they built these cisterns, they didn't even do a good enough job of it. They had them full of holes. Can't do anything without God, really. Now, it would be one thing if they had made cisterns to try and contain the source of the living water from week to week, and some of us have maybe been guilty of that, getting our Sunday-to-Sunday -Sunday refills and trying to live off that all week. At least coming to church on Sunday to fill it back up. But these people made their own cisterns, and it doesn't even say they tried to fill it with living water. They found different sources to try to fill their cisterns from. A source someplace other than their Heavenly Father. We can't be content on living out of a cistern. If we want to live in the overflow, we have to visit the well every day. It's the source that's there. It's available. 
once you've done the work, once you've tapped in, once you've broken through, once you've prayed through, once you've pressed and pressed and pressed, and you get to that place where you know the flow is real and it's pure and it's whole and it's wholesome and it, 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 it gives us our strength, you want to live in that place. You want to tap into it. You want to not go one day without it. It doesn't become, like Pastor talked today, a duty. It becomes something out of relationship that I need it. I need to need God. I can't go without God. It's not because of my duty just for doing something right, but I need him in my life. I need his source of strength. Without him, I am nothing. Truthfully, I am nothing. But it's going to take time to dig into that source. We've got to get the pickaxe sometimes out and, and break through that hard, hard soil that's, that's been compacted. And maybe there's some rocks and maybe it's granite and maybe you'll have to dig for a few weeks. But if you give yourself to it and if you let your life be given to Jesus, uh, he'll fill your life to overflowing. He'll fill you so that you walk in his spirit. Uh, you can walk in it. Uh, you can talk with him. You can be a part of what he wants for your life. Just get to the source. Live in the overflow. We can't be satisfied with weak old, spider-infested cistern water. I've seen some of those old basements that had stone cisterns, and they weren't pretty. Might have been a few dead rats in there even. Truthfully, we need fresh water. We need to drink from the source that never runs dry. Yes, we need to get in. We need to get our cup. We need to go to the source. We got to trust him to fill us. And he's here tonight. Sister Tracy, come back to the piano. The living water is available for the whole world. Jesus died for everyone. It's, just, it's not just for the name on the doors of this church or any other. It's anybody. That's why we're called to be the church. To go out. So that they can feel the source. They can feel the love. They can feel the compassion. They can feel the difference. To know that we have been with God. That's how they knew the disciples, they said, how do these guys even know what they're talking about? They're unlearned. But somehow, they spoke with wisdom that wasn't from this world. They never spent their time in, in the great Bible schools of their day. Although Paul did, he spent some time studying more law as a Pharisee. But the disciples were just average Joes, as you might call them unlearned Moses face radiated when he came down off the mountain because he had been with God what's this world need to see they don't need to see Justin they need to see a difference they need to know there's something different about what I spend my time doing where I spend my time where my focus is the living water that's what my children need to see. That's what my home needs to see. That there's something different. And when the world and all the chaos gets to me, I know that there's a place that I can go. He's there. Anytime you just stop, you take a few moments to whisper his name. Why don't we do that right now? Jesus. Jesus. You're my source. You're my source. You're the source of strength. You're the source. You're my living water. You're waiting for us every morning, every night when we lay our head down, Father, you're there. You're our source. Okay. 
Whatever's going on in my life right now, God. Whatever thing that the enemy tries to tempt me with. Whatever he tries to put into my thoughts. I go back to your truth. I go back to the source. I go back to my place of safety. I go back to my place of sanctuary. And that's wherever you are, Jesus. It's wherever you are. I can make it the cab of my truck. I can make it my living room. I can make it my cubicle. I just need a few moments with you. Because you're my source. Rashoto Rabama Suto he said his sheep know his voice. There's a lot of voices in the world. The storm that we're in, a lot of things that could draw you away so many things. The only way you're going to know His voice is by spending time with Him. To know where He's pointing you in His Word. He looked at the city of Jerusalem and He said, so many times I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks. He wants to do that for you tonight. He wants to gather you. He wants to gather us under his wings of safety. Under his wings of safety. The source. The source of our protection. The source of our peace. Jesus' name. You're worthy, Jesus. Don't turn him away. Don't let anybody tell you it's not necessary. This is a different day. We need him more. More than yesterday. You know that song, sister? Let's sing it. Let's sing it. Need you, Lord, more than yesterday. I need you, Lord. Oh, yes. More than words can say. Need you, Lord. establishes us. More than ever before I need I think he's calling somebody tonight to be restored in him. To reclaim maybe some promises that you have stood on and trusted in. He's calling you, some of us, to dig our own wells. It's been a long time. Maybe there's some stones that have gotten into those wells. We need to redig them. Even if they've been wells that you've dug for yourself and the enemy has filled them. Maybe it's been filled with contentment. Maybe it's been filled with just not caring so much. Lord, take us back. 
Remind us, Father, of that connection that we used to have, I pray. Every day, Lord, I need to live in the overflow. I can't be living in someone else's. I need the overflow for myself so that I can affect somebody. Jesus, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, church, we're all mature enough. You don't need a, a minister to direct you. Surely you can follow the leading of the Spirit. Could you follow the leading of the Spirit right now? Come on, just follow the leading of the Spirit. None of us are novices, I don't think, here tonight. Let's just seek after the Lord. And if you don't know what to do, just, just, just wait on the Lord. Just call upon Him. Just worship Him. Just pray. Just be honest about your life situation. Maybe you haven't been open and honest with him lately. But once you open up your heart and say, Lord, you just wash through. Would you wash through this layer, that layer? Wash through this hurt, that hurt. Wash through this concern, that concern. Come on. He's here tonight. Let him, let him overflow your life. Hallelujah. Water's to swim in. Well, oh, there's a coolness and a sweetness in the house. I'm just going to let the Spirit do its work in you. Take as long as you need, church. We need this more than we need anything else. There's nothing else we could be doing that's more precious. Let's redrink those old wells. Let's remove, renew those old covenants. God wants to give us our territory back. He wants to give us our flow back. He wants to give us not just a flow but an overflow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Take your time. The Lord told us this morning to wait on Him. Anybody obedient to the will of God, let's just be obedient. I promise you, it'll be worth it. Let's increase the flow in our lives. Spirit. Not just enough for us, but enough for our family, enough for our community. Ask for more than what you need.
even our enemies, Lord. Let them receive a flow, Lord, of blessing in their lives, just like those Philistines, Lord. Lord, it may seem like it's worthless, but families' lives are being changed by the things we have to leave behind. But today, today, Lord, we're digging down a fresh well. That's it. As you were speaking toward the end, there's Brother Pollard. I thank you for sharing that message. The Lord just opened my eyes a little bit to what would happen if every single one of us didn't just have enough flow in our lives for ourselves, but for our spouses and our community. And if two spouses were both overflowing, it would flow out of their lives and into their children. And if the family was overflowing, then it would flow out of them into their street, into their neighborhood, to their friends. If a church would be in the overflow, nobody would ever come to our church without leaving healed. Nobody would ever come doubting and wondering, and they would leave in the flow. If it's been a while, maybe you need to go back. I think there's still one or two back there. Sister... Uh, Freeman's vision that the angel gave her about the flow. I encourage you. I think there's still one or two back there. If not, let me know. I'll email it to you. I wrote it down. My wife typed it up, and I, I keep it. And, uh, man, we need the flow. And there's a whole list of things in there, of things that can stop the flow. We can't afford in this hour to stop the flow. There's got to be flow. There's got to be power. Hallelujah. In closing tonight, I saw uh, a lady uh, launching a sea dew in Ormonto because we like to go sit by the water there sometimes and it just wouldn't work. And my brother-in-law has a, has one or two of them, a uh, sea dew, and they're, they run off of the flow. They basically have a jet inside that propels the water out the back pretty amazing but guess what happens is something gets in the front of that not good same thing with jet plane you don't want a flock of geese going in the engine it's gonna we get a problem if we let anything get in come into us that reduces the power of the flow in our lives amen be careful the bible put it this way be careful the little spots little foxes spoil the vine it doesn't take a whole lot. It doesn't take a whole lot. A bird with bird. That's crazy if you think about it. There's not a whole lot to a bird. They're awfully light. But they can actually, if we're not careful, they can destroy something so so powerful. And I don't know about you, I want the flow in my life. Thank you for sharing with us tonight your heart and your vision. How many of you want to be part of the flow? I don't want to just come to church and be a sister. We got too many people come to church, and I'm not saying necessarily here, but be careful that we don't become cisterns where we need the overflow or pastor pour into me or this pour into me. or We constantly, and listen, I, I know that there's so much access today on the Internet to other ministers and to all these things, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but be careful because that's someone else's flow, and you need to build your own well. Oh, hear me tonight, church. You need your own well. You're your pastor tonight. You need your own well. You need your own flow. Yes, yes, yes. Don't leave thinking it's okay to just live off of yesterday's power and yesterday's and someone else's flow. 
Don't do that. Don't do that. The storm that's here, you're going to need your own flow. You need your own well. You need your own place of comfort and safety from the storm. You won't have time to get to church. You won't have time to make the phone call. It'll be Jesus, and either he hears you or you don't. Anybody know what I'm talking about here tonight? Anybody know what I'm talking about here tonight? It'll be either he knows your name or he doesn't. He knows your voice and you know his or he doesn't. And he'll warn you if you're listening and walking in the flow. I want to be in tune with the Spirit of God. So let's commit ourselves right now. Heavenly Father, we don't want this just to be a message, even though we know it was the note of the Spirit. Let's not just tell Brother Justin that was a good message. No, I want you to tell Brother Justin Pollard, this is what God is speaking to me. Thank you for being the oracle of God. Thank you for giving direction for my future, for myself and my family. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to dig you down. I'm going to dig out the well with prayer and with fasting again. The, the wells of my parents and the wells of my elders and the wells, Lord Jesus, that other people that I've known in the church body, intercessors, people of faith and supplication. God, I'm going to be that person myself. God, maybe I've never done it before, but it doesn't matter. Lord, I'm going to dig a well. And then where you meet with me, I'll dig another well, just like he did. Not just a well for the others, but a well, Lord, where you speak to me, where you've spoken to me. There I will live. Lord, I will delight in your blessings. Hallelujah. Did you catch that? Well, am I, am I right? He dug a well, third well, and then he, we went and God talked to him on the 24th and 25th, and he dug another well where God talked to him. Amen. So not only a well for the sheep and the people in his territory and all those that he loved, but a well where God talked to him. Isn't that beautiful? You should not only have a well for others, but a well where God has talked to you. Dig down and let the flow go. Amen, amen, amen. Would you stand with me tonight? How many people believe that we have what the world needs? How many believe that we have what the world needs? It's a dry desert land out there, folks. If you, some of you have been around the arid areas, I certainly have. And you may not see it in the natural here, but I promise you in the spiritual, when I, at least when I came here, and I believe that's changing, but I, in the spirit here, this is a desert land spiritually amen but we can have it back if we will allow the spirit to bring the flow heavenly father we pray as we go from this place but not from your presence lord help us to be aware that lord if we ignore this the consequences will not just be upon us but they'll be beyond the generations to come but god i believe we feel a passion and a flow here tonight it's going to carry us beyond this one response. It's going to carry us through the night. And in the morning, we're going, to, we're going to do things a little differently tomorrow. We're going to go a little longer in our prayer. We're going to dig a little deeper. We're going to pray until there's not only flow in our lives, but a flow from us into someone else's life. Until we've received the assurance that you have heard us and that our prayers have been answered. Amen. And that you are doing a work in the lives of those that we care about those that we're concerned for, and those that we're reaching for. We pray this in the name of Jesus and the church. Would you say amen? amen? We agree. God bless you.